Okay, so welcome to the, the final talk in the session on community intelligence for bioinformatics. Um, I'm very excited to have brought uh, a representative of the Folded team to talk about a very different kind of community intelligence and a different way of getting at it for our final talk. So without further ado, uh, Firas Khatib from the University of Washington. Thank you, Ben. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Firas Khatib, and I will be talking about Folded. So Foldit was developed um, by the Computer Science and Engineering Department at the University of Washington uh, in collaboration with David Baker's lab in the Department of Biochemistry. Foldit is a graphical user interface representation of the Rosetta Suite uh, for predicting and designing proteins, where proteins can be manipulated uh, with the Rosetta energy shown in real time. You can uh, pull on the protein, you can freeze regions of the protein, you can put in constraints, and you can uh, repack rotomers, you can do uh, gradient-based minimization, although we call those shake and wiggle, because that sounds a lot more fun. Uh, Folded is also a multi multiplayer online video game, uh, where players compete uh, to fold proteins and reach the highest score. Uh, now I say highest score because even though they're optimizing for the Rosetta Energy, we quickly learned that um, players don't like to optimize for negative numbers. They, they want to reach the highest score. So that was, that was the first lesson um, that we learned. Uh, Folded players can form teams, and then they can share their solutions as well as their strategies uh, with, with their teammates um, and with other players. So there are many visualizations that we've added uh, to the game because not all gamers have a background in biochemistry. So uh, for example, these represent uh, clashes uh, between atoms. Here we uh, show voids uh, in the protein. Uh, this little um, greasy ball means uh, this is an exposed hydrophobic. Uh, these are hydrogen bonds uh, here. And so one of the questions that we wanted to answer was to see how human pattern recognition and puzzle solving skills could com compare with the Rosetta automated um, uh, protocols that, that, that we have. And we actually found that in certain cases, uh, human intuition was, was able to outperform uh, our, our, our Rosetta algorithm. And I'll, I'll, go through, I'll go through one example here uh, where you can see this player uh, trajectory over, uh, over two hours uh, and, and this is um, their uh, folded score. And they basically started with this protein here uh, and, and this terminal end uh, where they pulled it uh, out and so they got you know, a worse score. And then they completely unraveled that end getting you know, really a terrible, terrible score. Um, but this was necessary in order to actually bring that terminal uh, end into the core of the protein uh, where, where, where it belongs and, and perform what, what is essentially a, a strand swap. And then, you can see they ended up with a, with a higher score um, than, they, than they had uh, started with. And this is what I'm uh, showing in, in, in this plot here. The starting model here is shown as the, the black uh, dot there. And that, that was this red structure here. And if you compare this to how uh, a Rosetta algorithm did, uh, th those are all the yellow points here, uh, which represent uh, a different Rosetta trajectory. And the closest that Rosetta uh, was able to get on this, this is an RMSD to native, and this is Rosetta energy, uh, was this point right here, uh, just over two angstroms uh, from the native. And, and it had a, a pretty high uh, Rosetta energy uh, as opposed to all these uh, other uh, trajectories that had lower energies. Um, so Rosetta wasn't able to, to, to get over you know, this, this energy barrier. But you can see that the folded player uh, was. And in fact, all these uh, green, green dots represent all the folded solutions. Uh, for this particular puzzle. Um, and the, 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 one, the, the example that I just showed uh, previously um, is, is highlighted here by, by these blue lines. So, so the player started uh, with this red model and unraveled the protein, uh, getting horrible, horrible scores and going uh, very far from the native in order to then uh, come back and, and, and get close uh, to the native structure. And so this is the advantage uh, that humans have uh, over, over computers in, 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 in this particular case. You, you, you can imagine that a human can see okay, I'm going to have to do these very drastic uh, and, and complicated moves that are going to give me very, very bad energies for a while, but that's a necessary step that I have to do in order to get over the, the energy ba barrier and, and get close to, to the native. And so you can see the top scoring uh, folded solution here uh, is the green model uh, superimposed on, on, onto the native uh, structure there. So this was a very exciting uh, proof of concept to us, but uh, we wanted to apply this to a real world problem. And so the Mason Pfizer monkey virus retroviral protease uh, causes AIDS in rhesus monkeys. And experimentalists have been trying to solve the crystal structure uh, in its monomeric form of, of, of this protein for over 15 years. And all the conventional methods uh, had failed. 
So they contacted uh, David Baker's lab and asked, you know, could you run Rosetta and, and your computational methods on this? Um, that I've worked in the past for, for, for molecular replacement for, for, for certain proteins. Uh, and so we threw all, all our uh, computational power at it. Um, didn't work. So we decided, let's, let's give it to the folder players. And, and so there's an NMR structure uh, for, for, for this protein. And, and you can see there's a lot of variation um, in the NMR model. And even, even the NMR structure uh, wasn't good enough uh, to solve it uh, with molecular replacement. Um, we tried using CS Rosetta, which uses chemical shift uh, information uh, from, from, from the NMR structure. Didn't, didn't, work, didn't work either. So we gave it to the folder players uh, for three weeks uh, over winter break. And, um, and this is what happened. Uh, so, so this is uh, one of the um, starting structures. Uh, we gave them all 10 uh, starting models from, from the NMR ensemble. And um, a player, uh, SP Vincent, took uh, this particular model, and this was their 2,771st solution uh, after working on it for five days. Uh, and this is, this is what they came up with, this, this yellow model. And you can see that already they've gotten uh, closer to the, to, to the native than the start. So um, the blue here is, uh, is the native structure. But there's still a, a lot of work uh, that, 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 that needed to be done. The, the core here is, is pretty much off. Uh, luckily, SP Vincent shared uh, their solution with the rest of their team, and uh, teammate Grabhorn took this yellow uh, model and uh, improved on it with this uh, magenta one, where you can see the core now is much, much more accurate uh, here. Um, but this loop is still incorrect. Luckily, the third teammate, uh, Mimi, was able to tuck that loop in right there, and using this green folded solution, uh, crystallographers were actually able to solve the crystal structure of this protein uh, using molecular replacement. Uh, and if you compare this green uh, folder prediction to the starting uh, NMR model, you can see how, how very, very different uh, it, it is. So after the folder model um, was used to solve the structure, the, the phasor log likelihood was calculated for all this team's uh, predictions by optimally, um, optimally su superimposing them onto the native structure. And so to identify um, a uh, solution as correct by molecular replacement using phaser, uh, the, log likelihood, ho the log likelihood has to be better than the best uh, random model, which is shown here uh, by this blue band. So you can see here, um, the, the x-axis here is time, and you can see how some of their models got better over the first uh, 11 days of the puzzle. So um, this team uh, generated, uh, in the first 11 days, 75,000 solutions. Actually, all the folded players for this particular puzzle generated over a million solutions. Um, but you can see here that the, the, the model that SP Vincent uh, started working on uh, was improved by, by Grabhorn. And, a, a, and that model already was, 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 uh, was, was quite good. Um, but Mimi's uh, improvements basically put it over the edge. And we were ac actually able to pick this model out uh, due to its energy. So how were they able to do this? Well, one of the tools that was used by these three players um, is called the alignment tool, which actually lets you uh, move uh, alignments and then uh, thread your sequence uh, onto templates that, that we provide uh, here. Um, and so, so for in, in this particular case, there, there, there were no templates. We just gave them 10 different NMR models. Uh, and so they, they basically had 10 different ones uh, that they could load. Um, but the interesting thing is we, we, we came up with this alignment tool for the um, CASP9 experiment, which is a protein structure prediction experiment. And the player said, you know, this is, this is great. We, you know, we can thread uh, templates, and, and, and that's nice. But what we really need is to be able to thread a subsection. Uh, so for example, here, I just want to thread this part of the template. And you can see here um, that it, it, it's just threading uh, that region as opposed to the entire template. So this was requested by the players. Uh, so we provided them with that tool. Uh, it's called partial threading. And then they actually used that uh, to solve this structure by using partial threading uh, from one NMR model uh, to, to another. So this was exciting in that you know, the players themselves uh, realized what, 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 what would be more useful to them. And, uh, and then we were able to implement it. So this protein causes AIDS uh, in monkeys. And the hope is that the solved structure at a high resolution uh, in the monomeric form uh, could lead to better antiretroviral drugs. Uh, the scientists that have been working on this uh, protein for, for, for many years were, were so, so happy when this got solved that uh, they actually um, made us open bottles of champagne over Skype simultaneously from Poland um, <laughs> be, because this, this just meant so much to them. They, they, they worked on it for 15 years and now they finally get to see it. Um, but despite all that, the three players insisted that we don't use their names or even their folded usernames in the publication. Um, they said we're a team. 
even though it was just three of us on, on this particular problem, uh, we wouldn't be able to have come up with those solutions without the rest of our teammates, and we insist that you use uh, the contenders, which is the name of their team, uh, as, as the co-authors on the paper. So Fold It Contenders Group is, is, is a co-author. And so we, we thought that was pretty noble, and we don't know if the scientific community would have been uh, quite the same, <laughs> that one. Um, so how are the players able uh, to solve these types of problems? Um, We'll have a wiki, of course. <laughs> and, and this is completely um, you know, curated and, and, and run entirely by the folder players. We don't touch it in any way. And, and so what we, what we did start noticing is that they started posting the various strategies that they have. And, and lots of different players would have different, um, different methods uh, that, that they were using. And, and they quickly started asking us to automate these methods. You know, instead of having to do the same moves over and over again, they wanted you know, a, a, an automated method of doing this. So, so we came up with a, what we call the Foldit Cookbook, where basically you can select a bunch of different ingredients, uh, and then you can create recipes. Uh, and so we, we, we basically gave the players a chance to codify their strategies in, in a systematic uh, manner so that um, they would then be able to actually share their recipes with um, their, their teammates from their group, and then their Teammates would then be able to improve on these recipes, and then they would even share them with uh, with with uh, other players. Um, and then you know they, they said this is great and you know r really nice and, and, and very time time uh, time saving. But we can't do for loops, and we can't do uh, you know we 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 need more. We, you need to let let us put in uh, you know, conditional statements. And so we basically had to give them a scripting version of this um, uh, using Lua. And so so that that's what we did. And so. Uh, they can edit and they can run uh, other players' algorithms, and so you get this, you know, uh, dissemination of, of, of knowledge that um, that has been really interesting. So, so this is a weird-looking plot, but this, the size of each of these uh, circles represents how often uh, that recipe was used. And so, uh, the green ones are publicly shared ones, uh, and the private ones that that, that that a user just kept kept to themselves are, are in gray. So, so this one, for example, here, um, a user created a recipe shared it with all the players, not just the ones on their own team, every, everyone, even their competitors, because uh, you know, this is a global collaborative effort. Uh, and a bunch of players uh, you know, uh, made their own versions of it. One, one, one player used it a lot and then made you know, different versions of those, um, didn't share them with anybody. Uh, someone else modified this recipe and publicly shared uh, their version of the algorithm, which then a ton of people started using. Uh, this one is interesting because uh, it was a publicly um, made recipe. One user modified it a few times, then shared it with the rest of their team. Uh, a lot of their teammates had their own versions of it. Uh, one, one user then modified it a few, few more times, shared it with the team again, maybe as a validation metric before then having a, a publicly uh, used one. And so you know, we, we found this to be a, a very interesting uh, way of, of basically spreading uh, the level of expertise that, that uh, a lot of the different uh, players have. So we wanted to see which are the most used uh, recipes. And so during the, the Cas9 experiment, uh, players used many, 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 many recipes. And so each color here represents a different folder player. So, so this one in pink here, for example, is just one player using this recipe a lot of times. Um, but it became quite evident that there's these two outliers that were just used a lot more uh, than all the others. Blue fuse here, where you can see some players used it many, many, many times, but lots, lots, lots of different players used it, and then uh, and Quake. And so if we just look at the re weekly recipe usage uh, from when we introduced uh, recipes and then the, the Lua scripting uh, capabilities uh, and, and then through CASP, you can see each, each gray line here represents a different uh, recipe that was used. And, and you can see how often Quake was used pretty much consistently since it, since it started, uh, and then Blue Fuse when it uh, was, uh, was written. And so the interesting thing is these, these two recipes used a lot more than, uh, than, than all the others. They're also very similar to one another. Quake is written in the uh, original cookbook format where you just, uh, it's just a visual block uh, interface. And then Blue Fuse is basically the, the Lua scripted version of that. And Blue Fuse is very simple. It's just, this is the entire code written in Lua uh, for Blue Fuse. And I've, I've, I've shown it as a flowchart uh, on the right so you can kind of see just the, the, the general idea of it. What's interesting about this is during this, the exact same time as, as the folder players uh, were developing this, uh, this, this recipe, um, our lab was working on its own uh, algorithm, which, uh, which we call Fast Relax, which was unpublished and eerily similar 
to the one that the folded players uh, came up with. Um, basically, both algorithms ramp up the repulsive term uh, while performing optimizations and then lowering it again. And faster lax does this five to 15 times, depending on how many times um, or how thoroughly you want your, your protein to be relaxed. Um, but this, this, this was really cool. We were, we were very excited uh, by this. Um, and so the first question uh, from you know, the scientists that have been working on this is, well, which, one, which one's better? <laughs> uh, they started sweating. Uh, so, so we ran this on a benchmark of a Rosetta decoys and, 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 and natives. And so the previously published uh, algorithm uh, called Classic Relax, um, you know, basically, the more you run it, the lower uh, your uh, Rosetta energy uh, gets. Um, fast Relax is, is uh, obviously performs much better. And, and this is uh, how, how, how Blue Fuse does. Um, so the first thing you might notice is, is how Blue Fuse really flattens out. Um, and you can, you know, this makes sense from a gaming perspective because if you came up with an algorithm that just keeps getting a higher and higher score the more you run it, you would obviously, you know, use that one and, 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 and that would get discovered. But that, 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 that's not how, 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 how it works and they weren't able to, to come up with that. What the, what the players did notice, however, is if you combine recipes, so this is a recipe called Breathe, this is Breathe 2, and if you combine those two with Blue Fuse, uh, you get this recipe called A Deep Breath, uh, written by uh, a player. And, and that does uh, get uh, lower energies um, as, as you run it longer. So, so this was interesting. And, and um, our, our colleagues in the lab you know, were like, OK, ours is better. This is cool. Um, you know, very happy about the folded players. Um, but a, a reviewer pointed out, actually, that's not a fair comparison because uh, Folded doesn't have all doesn't have access to everything that, that that Rosetta has. We basically give the folded players, you know, these kind of uh, diluted versions of, of the Rosetta code. It's basically the optimizations are simplified to run it at interactive speeds on your home computer. So it's actually not a fair comparison. What would be a fair comparison is if you wrote fast relax in Lua's scripting language and then ran it again. And so so that's what this plot is showing. And again, fast relax if you run it longer uh, does 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 do better. But the interesting thing is that on average, the folded players only run Blue Fuse about 120 seconds. And so for their purposes, <laughs> um, Blue Fuse is actually better for them, for, for, for what they use it uh, for. And so, so, th so that, was, that, was, that was quite interesting. Um, you know, had, had they you know, come, been able to come up with, with, with fast relax, it might not have been uh, useful for them uh, at all. So, Folded players have also been working on uh, protein design. Uh, we posted this computationally designed enzyme uh, to folded players to see uh, if they could actually improve it. So this is the starting scaffold that we gave them. And despite significant catalytic activity, uh, the active site leaves uh, the substrate highly solvent exposed uh, when you compare that to substrates of natural enzymes. So we, so we asked the folded players, you know, can you basically I think the, the puzzle was literally called, you know, close the loop, or, or, or um, I forget what it was. But basically, you know, can, can you make this better? And, and we let them insert residues. We let them uh, mutate them. And uh, after many, many back, back and forths, um, this, is, this, is, this was the final player scientist uh, design uh, that they came up with. Um, based on the folded player designs, the lab actually tested small libraries in which um, what was initially an 11 residue loop was redesigned into this 24 residue helix uh, turn helix. Um, and this design protein increased activity over 30 fold. And it was actually uh, experimentally confirmed uh, by crystal structure, which is shown here uh, in green. The, the one thing I do want to point out is this is a, the sequence of, a, of the final crystal structure and of, of the final design. Um, but this was the sequence that the folded players came back with when they came up with this topology. This was the sequence that they came back with uh, initially, which you can notice five tryptophans in a row, as well as some other interesting stuff in there. Uh, we didn't think that would fold up particularly well. Um, but that's one of the other interesting things that, 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 that Folded has helped us with is actually find these loopholes in the Rosetta energy function. Uh, and it's, it's been a very useful, uh, basically, crowdsourcing of, of debugging. And, and they've been very, very helpful in, in, in finding these um, these issues that, that Rosetta doesn't usually run into on its own, um, but, but they've been ac actually able, able to help us a lot with that. Um, so that's, that's been another aspect that's been uh, very interesting. So Foldit isn't just for gamers. Uh, everyone in the Baker Lab basically uses Foldit instead of having to you know, open your protein up in Pymol, run Rosetta, 
and then you know open the result back in, in, in Pymol. Basically, everything is done uh, in Foldit, and so you can download Foldit as a standalone. It doesn't have any of the gaming stuff, um, uh, uh, you know, for for academic use here. Uh, so this is the website. I, ma I made a tiny URL uh, link that should be uh, easier uh, for you to find. Um, also, uh, education is uh, is kind of a, a very important part uh, of Foldit. One one that maybe we haven't done uh, as much as we. Uh, we want, but 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 hopefully um, we'll uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, worked on a lot more in the future. It's already being used uh, in textbooks. Uh, many many uh, teachers are assigning Foldit as homework assignment, uh, and we're able to actually post puzzles uh, where only your your um, students would be competing against themselves. They wouldn't have to compete against all the you know Foldit masters around the world and everything. Um, and uh, other directions that we're we're going to is uh, uh, DNA. Um, uh, we have these flu puzzles uh, that, 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 that we've posted. Um, Folded players are, are working on designing uh, a hemagglutinin binder to both H1 uh, and H2 strains um, in order to pro get, protect against both uh, current and then uh, f future uh, influenza threats. Um, Jeff Flatten has uh, um, integrated electron density uh, into the game. And, and so, 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 so you're able to have some uh, experimental um, uh, in, in information and then you're basically able to minimize uh, uh, into the density and so that's 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 pretty new new and uh, and hopefully uh, that'll that'll be helpful um, he's also uh, uh, added symmetry uh, to fold it uh, in, in previous cast uh, experiments the the players could only work uh, with the, with the monomeric targets now if something is um, a dimer or in this case a, a, a trimer the, the folded players will be able to actually uh, participate uh, in, in, in those targets uh, as well and, and maybe design uh, fun new proteins. And uh, lastly, um, more intuitive interfaces. So you can um, hopefully, uh, you know, play folded with the kids in the living room uh, with your Xbox Connect <laughs> uh, in, uh, on your TV. and. Uh, so this is, this is work by Danyu uh, Hisao. And uh, if you're familiar at all with um, the Leap, um, which is going to be coming out soon, we're, we're also going to try to um, do a prototype with that, because uh, that sounds very, very uh, exciting. So as, as you can see, there, there, there's many, many people that have worked uh, on Foldit. And uh, I have to thank uh, every single one of them. Uh, obviously, uh, of course, uh, David Baker, um, Seth Cooper, and Zoran Popovich uh, from the Center for Game Science. Um, Adrian Troy was one of the co-creators of Foldit and has now uh, co-created uh, an RNA folding game with Riju Das at Stanford. Um, all, all, all these people are, are crystal, crystallographer um, collaborators. Uh, and of course, uh, most of all the Foldit players, uh, without which uh, none, none, of the, none of this would be possible without them. Uh, if you haven't tried the game out, uh, it's fold.it. Uh, and uh, thank you for staying through the last session of, uh, of, of SMB for this. I'm sorry, I might miss this. So, what the rendering engine you use here? Um, that is a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> I I I work on the the biochemistry side of Foldit, and I, I I have no idea what it is. Okay. So, uh, what about the the size limit of your? Yes. Model? So that that is that is the major limitation uh, currently uh, with Foldit. Basically, um, 200 residues, and it starts getting really really slow. Um, and especially for, you know, it, it might work on our, on our computers, but not everybody's home computer is, you know, the latest and, and, and greatest. Um, and so, yeah, we don't post anything over, over 200 residues in, 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 unless, unless we have to. And so that, that's currently the major bottleneck, and it's, it's not an easy one to, to, to fix. I'm sorry, the last one. Is it open source? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's part of the Rosetta Commons, uh, and the Rosetta Commons is, is, is open source, yeah. Yes. There we go. So, um, yeah, these are. This is uh, gender, occupation, and this is uh, by country. And then, oh, I thought I had one for uh, age. Um, but yeah, so so you'll notice um, half half of all our users are either from the U.S. Uh, or the U.K., but the other half uh, are non uh, uh, from from you know from from from, from other countries. And uh, we, we now have Foldit in, in different languages. Uh, so again, that was completely done 
by the players. We just gave them the tools for that, and then and then you can basically, um, you know, if, if if there's a language that that hasn't been done yet, you know, ask ask someone to do it, and 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 and, and they'll want to. Um, it's it's amazing what the, the folder players basically just 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 do everything. Um, this this was the the, the interesting one. Um, we asked our top players, you know, what's your prior um, biochemistry knowledge, and most of them basically said none, or I haven't taken you know chemistry since high school, um, and and so that 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 was that was very surprising. Um, but personally, I think that that's probably one of the advantages that the folded players have um, is you don't have all these kind of preconceptions about oh I know a protein is folding it folds like this it has to be like this this is that's the way it, you know. You can try everything when, when you don't have all these uh, kind of constraints. And how many players are you talking about? Oh, okay. So we've had over you know 200,000 people uh, try the game, but uh, as you all know, it's quite a difficult game, and it has a pretty steep learning curve. And so, you know, on a, on uh, a given puzzle, there's about you know 300 people that are that are consistently uh, playing, and um, you know that 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 has peaked. You know, when 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 we had articles coming out. Um, We'd have about a thousand players uh, at a time, but it's really, it's really hard to uh, to re retain um, re re retain players because it, you know it is it is a difficult game, and especially because it keeps growing and you know it's it, it launched in 2008 and it's a very very different game than it was uh, back then. You know we've added lots of things that make it a lot more complicated, like like the alignment tool, like symmetry, like electron density information, and all, all this sort. Of. Very, inter very interesting work. So I'm not actually in the protein folding area, but uh, this your work remind me of the GERD language paper published in Peanuts this year about the use of uh, active learning method with game powered uh, music annotation. So I'm wondering, do you have underlying model learning process to capture all the cap to capture all the uh, uh, folder players behavior, and you can enrich your model like the Bayesian inference. Afterwards, someday you can go without real person for the players. You can automatically inference all the structure, like model selection or something like that. So like doing some like machine learning right, type right, stuff? Right. The, so that actually one of the ideas behind letting them encode everything was, I don't want to say laziness, but so that we wouldn't have to analyze all of the moves. Uh, you know, if, if they basically have certain techniques that, you know, this is what I do, and they encode it. Then, then, then our thought was, you know, we can just take that and then plug, plug it, plug it yeah, back. I saw in. the figure that it's, it's, it takes quite a long time for one person to get a good score. So if you have a machine learning process behind it, you can really improve this efficiency, like speed it up. Yeah. Well, so what, one of the things that that, that we realized when, once we started analyzing all these recipes, because you know our hope ideally was we're going to find the folder player that's come up with this amazing algorithm. We'll just encode it back into Rosetta, right. and then and then we're done, and this will this will be great. Um, but what we found is that it's basically entirely context dependent. You know, folder players, there's no folder player that has an algorithm that starts from the beginning and to the end. They, they, they basically, they'll do some hand manipulation, then they'll run this, this recipe, then they'll do something else, you know, a analyze it, try some stuff, oh, that doesn't work, okay, then they'll use this other recipe. And so it's, it's not as simple as... Yeah, sure, as, sure, yeah, as, this as, can be very complicated, yeah. So, but yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely uh, um, one of the directions. Okay, very interesting, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for the session. One more question? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you come up?